good evening, afternoon, or morning. Uh, not sure when you'll be viewing this. Uh, welcome to freshman, sophomore parent night, which we've now split because of the quarantine, to simply freshman parent night. It's been a, a challenging spring. Uh, we did not want to ignore the fact that we had to cancel the freshman, sophomore parent night. We just changed the delivery a little bit more to an asynchronous opportunity. We think it's important to, to introduce ourselves and our services to all of our parents with the hopes of motivating you, some of you to ask questions when, when you have them. Uh, we are an office that is always open uh, and always up to asking questions to try and demystify, de-stress, and just quite frankly, help all of our students and their families. Uh, we're gonna get uh, started soon with a PowerPoint presentation. It's gonna be the majority of the program. I think about a half hour, 35 minutes or so, we should be able to get this done and always welcome questions to follow. So thank you very much for attending again tonight, this morning, this afternoon's program. Thank you for your patience while I work through our presentation. Again, we've split tonight's program. Again, I always say tonight's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll split the presentation up. This is only for freshman parents. Uh, those of you just conclude, your children just concluded your fre their freshman year. So congratulations. Yesterday we had uh, the senior celebration on campus, the drive-through. It was great seeing people again. And uh, we certainly hope to host you in our offices uh, very soon. Those of you who don't know, this is our office. Uh, my name's uh, Mr. Chris Bohm. Uh, I've had about 18 years of college admissions experience. My final job in the college admissions world was at Albright College as vi Assistant Vice President for Enrollment and Director of Admission. Uh, also in our office, uh, Associate Director of College Counseling is Ms. Catherine Souza, who's worked at Muhlenberg College, Albright College, and Lehigh University as well. Uh, Mrs. Liz Lyon is our assistant. Uh, and probably I'd be very confident saying our most valued uh, team member. Uh, she's worked at Albright for many years as a past Archmere parent uh, and is the person that makes sure everything goes smoothly. Uh, the other gentleman in the picture is not a member of our staff. He's our Syracuse rep uh, who was kind enough to pose for this picture and is uh, uh, ironically the only one not dressed in orange. Uh, we will also be welcoming Mr. Logan Duffy uh, to our office. Those most of you know him from the Archmere Admission Office. Uh, Logan comes with numerous years of college admissions experience, and we're gonna tap into that a little bit. He's gonna take a small caseload every year uh, in, in order to make sure that we can offer as much personal attention to all of you as possible. Combined, we come with over 55 years of college admissions and high school college counseling experience. Uh, so we think that uh, we're gonna be able to offer you a really good service, get all your questions answered, make you comfortable that you're gonna be taken care of uh, through this process. So what are we going to be doing? Uh, the nice thing about being on video is that I don't have to read everything. We don't have to go through everything. So we will obviously cover all of these issues. And what I would preface everything with is that if we do not cover something tonight that you wanted information about, that's where the emails or the phone calls start. We'd be happy to have that conversation with you to make sure that you feel comfortable about where your child is at, where you are at in the process, or where you think you need to get to or your child needs to get to. So what is the model at Archmere? Uh, I, I think many of you asked a lot of questions throughout the recruitment process. Your children have probably been in contact with you about some of the things that we've done with them. Uh, but right now they're meeting a lot with Mrs. Duro. Mrs. Duro is the guidance counselor for the, for the rising sophomore class. Uh, the college counseling model takes, we take students on board indiv on an individual basis in the junior year. Uh, when Mrs. Duro has a college counseling question or a family or a student is asking a question uh, in the early years, freshman and sophomore year about college, if she does not feel comfortable answering that question, she will always bring the student, we're in the same office, bring the student right down uh, in the suite and ask the questions. Uh, we will always answer questions of students, whether they bump into us in the lunchroom in St. Norbert's Hall, walking across the quad, 
or if they're brave enough sometimes in their freshman year to come down and ask questions in our office, which really gets us excited, to be quite honest with you. Uh, in the midway through the junior year, we will take on uh, our caseloads individually, and we'll start meeting with students, and that, that timeline will come through in a little bit. We have already had some contact with your students uh, before, during their freshman year. Uh, we attended more than one class meeting. We played the freshman GPA game with them, uh, which we actually emailed you afterwards to make sure that you are aware of when we are conversing with your children about college and our services. Next year, uh, we will introduce them to Cialfo, which is our new information system. Uh, freshman, sophomore, we will be getting into career classes. We, we go into their health classes. Uh, this year, we were unable to do the six lives exercise at the end of the year that we would normally do, so we'll push that exercise off to the sophomore year. So we will be in their classrooms this year. Uh, and again, make them as comfortable approaching us with questions as possible and give them a little taste of, of being able to move forward, being comfortable. Uh, and they're always, as you are, welcome to come to any of our college programs, uh, which we will publicize a calendar of events at the beginning of the year, uh, most with a set date, some with a date range, uh, with a date to be later determined. As I said earlier, uh, we will assign college counselors at the beginning of the junior year so the student knows and the family knows which counselor that they are working with. We will then have a college panel in the midway through October, November of the junior year usually kicks off the process. Uh, what we try to do is focus on our seniors uh, in the fall of the junior year, uh, give them all of our attention until early application deadlines, and then we can give the juniors proper attention uh, once those early deadlines have hit. Uh, and we will have junior parent nights as we will have senior parent nights. So there's a lot of opportunities uh, to get the personal attention that you wish. Uh, I'm going to escape out of the program for a second um, and also share something with you really quickly from the web so that you know, and I have something else up here, where to find some information. If you're ever wondering what your child should be doing every year, at least in terms of college, what we would recommend, uh, we do have the four-year college plan on our website and it is broken down into what the student should be doing, what the parents should be doing, what the college counseling office will be doing. So as a rising sophomore family, I think this is something that I would recommend that you review. And again, ask questions about if you have them. We go back to the presentation. what are colleges looking for? It's kind of a loaded question. Every college is looking for something different. There are some commonalities uh, about the review process, but there is certainly not a magic formula, uh, nor an expectation that every student can meet for every college. Our goal throughout this process is to make sure you're educated, that your child and you know exactly what is expected of them and when. I think that alleviates stress we want to introduce students and educate them as much as possible about what the process entails and what admission readers and offices do with the information they provide. So they feel as comfortable as possible, not only when they attack the process, but also in talking with admissions people. We want them, if they feel comfortable, they will be at their best. They will be able to communicate at a high level in person and in writing and alleviating some of those questions and stress really allows the student to shine. So we're gonna fast forward a little bit here to junior, senior year. What are, what are colleges going to be looking for? They're gonna be looking for a fit both ways. The student has their fit, what are they looking for? And the college has their fit, what are they looking for? When they match, it's a wonderful thing. That's also why we'll talk to students and families about you're not going to fit every college and every college is not going to fit you. Uh, so it's important that, and again, we're fast forwarding. Our students are not prepared cognitively to make some of the decisions that I'm talking about in this screen. 
it's very challenging to them. What do you want for the next four years of your life, which is really the next seven years of your life because you haven't even gotten to the college process. So asking them about what they want from college, what, what is a good fit for them, decision-making wise, their brains aren't ready to make that decision. I'm not saying that they're not intellectually gifted enough, that they're not smart enough uh, to, to take on a lot of different types of questions. It's just, it's way too much to put on our students to say, what do you want now? And what college do you want to go to at the end of your freshman year of high school? Uh, so we want, we want to preface a lot of what we're saying when we fast forward two years here uh, to that. Uh, we want students to know that schools are different, um, and schools know that. They want you, the student, to understand what's different between Lehigh and Lafayette. What makes a good Franklin and Marshall student? Why would a student be a good fit for Temple? So it's important that they, they'll eventually understand the schools that they're looking at, and, they, and schools want to know that. Uh, it can be an important part of the process. Eventually, your children will get pretty excited about some schools, and the mission offices and mission readers like to see that enthusiasm, as well as enthusiasm for school and learning, and obviously whatever else that they dedicate their time to. Uh, those are things that admission readers are gonna look for in applications. It's bolded, it's italicized, and it's the one thing that every school wants, they want a student that's academically qualified to succeed in their environment. And every, again, we already addressed, every environment is different. So academic qualifications are different at schools. But ultimately, the, one of the first hurdles that a student has to pass over is, is this student academically qualified to succeed? Because if the student isn't, the admission office is doing a disservice if they offer admission to a student that they know will not succeed in their environment. I think colleges are also looking for a student that's genuine, honest, and can express genuinely what they're looking for in the process and why. Here are some of the adjectives that we hope to be able to use to describe some of your children when we're writing recommendation letters in their senior year. I don't think any of these are bad. These are all wonderful things. And perhaps we can use some of them, if not hopefully many of them, to describe your children. Uh, all of them would be outstanding though as well. And you can see not all of them are exactly the same. Showing initiative, investigative, self-motivated. And please don't fear if, you're, if you would say, I do not use any of these terms or I do not use most of these terms to describe my child yet. Again, this is a process. Uh, they will get to a lot of these things. Some of your children, it might be a roller, their self-motivation might be a roller coaster throughout their years at Archmere. That's okay. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know some of the things uh, that colleges and universities are looking for. And again, this is not just one thing. These are several things. Our philosophies, I think this is probably the most important slide tonight uh, in terms of setting expectations of the process that we will work with them with. Uh, th this process is about your child. It is ultimately going to be a very big decision. It's a team process. Uh, and you, you, you're, the family is the most important teammate. We are excited to be a part of the team uh, and, and a part of the journey uh, for each student because it's different. Every, every student is different, every year is different, uh, and that's what keeps us fresh. It keeps the job fresh. Uh, but the process is about the student. They're the one making decisions. They're the one deciding about their futures. They're the ones that hopefully get excited about this process. The search process and the application process and the ultimate decision-making process is a huge growth opportunity for our students. I will tell them when we start junior college seminar, second and spring semester of their junior year, this is a case study. That if they ever wanted courses where they could see the real impact of what they're learning, this is going to be it. We are gonna walk them through a process that's gonna ask them to prioritize. It's gonna ask them to represent themselves in writing and in person. It's gonna ask themselves to look inward and be able to know themselves better. It's gonna be asked, it's gonna ask them to be able to work on their brand. 
it's also going to ask them to make perhaps some strategic conversations to decisions, excuse me. And it's going to have, they're going to deal with success and failure perhaps in this process. And ultimately when we're asking them to start a process by going and looking at everything that they would want to possibly look at throughout the process, they're going to have to reduce and make hard decisions about taking things off the table and ultimately only enrolling at one school. And that's a challenge without support, and that's why everybody else is here. But they will grow a lot. They will meet deadlines. They will meet expectations. They will work with adults. They will learn how to network. They will learn how to follow up. It will be a great process for them, and they will grow a lot. This is the one we struggle with sometimes delivering this message, but getting in is not as important as succeeding. Your children, if they work hard and succeed at all at Archmere, they are prepared to be successful in college. And I'm, I'm hoping that that ends up being the place that they decide is their number one school. But the number one school fluctuates so often we know that we don't wanna take that too seriously. We want them to be able to find numerous schools, numerous environments that they can be successful at. Casual conversations are the most powerful. When your child bumps into me in the lunchroom and says, Mr. Bohm, I have a question. I know we're gonna have a good conversation. Or Mr. Bohm, I just checked out this school. Or what do you think about me taking this class? Uh, the fact that they were brave enough again uh, and initiated that conversation. Initiation is a great word. Um, showing initiative. Uh, we appreciate that. That's wonderful. There's Again, we said there's no magic formula, but every student and every search is different. So those of you who are watching this who have had an older child go through the process, either at Archmere or at another school, please know this one's going to be different eventually. Uh, we'll all notice that and we'll see that different students have different hopes, dreams, desires, motivations, environments that they will be successful at, and they'll all attack this process uh, a little bit differently. And we're ending this slide, at least, with where we want to start the whole process. Midway through the junior year, when we meet with your children individually, we're going to ask them, why are you going to college? And it might be a challenging answer for them at first, but it's the first one that we need to be able to answer, that your child needs to be able to answer before it's where. They need to know why they're going. They need to know what they hope to achieve. They need to know what makes them successful and happy. And they need to be able to articulate that. And that's, what we're, that's the starting point. That'll give us our foundation to the where eventually. So what's a healthy preparation for college? And we're also, again, we're talking about students who haven't even started their sophomore year yet. So our emphasis and when we chatted with your children in the fall during their class meetings was transition. Transition as best as you can academically and socially. Get your feet underneath you. If you're struggling at all, please, please get help. Talk to Mrs. Duro, talk to your teachers. That was our message because the freshman year counts it counts toward their college decisions. It's not going to be the most important part of that decision-making process, but in terms of an application read, nine through 12 is on the transcript. So please talk to your child about their academics. If you haven't had the regular conversation with them throughout the year, it's certainly not too late. Ask them about how the year went, ask them what they struggled in. Please make sure you know what courses that they are taking next year. And if you have any questions, raise them with your child or with Mrs. Duro. I'm somewhat blindsided when I do talk to some parents in the junior year and, they're, and I pull out the transcript and show it to everybody and there are some surprises on there. Uh, I don't want that to be the case. So please ask questions this summer, uh, ask questions of your child, ask questions of Mrs. Duro and if there's anything missing, you can reach out to us or the teachers. Success comes in a lot of different ways for every child. I have two children in my house uh, and I gauge success differently for them. So if your child is taking our regular rigorous college prep course load and working really hard, 
and doing work that they gauge and you gauge with them is success, is a success, that's wonderful. Some of your children may not take an AP class here. Some of your students may not take an AP class till their senior year. That's fine, as long as they're challenging themselves. Then some of you watching this, your children in their sophomore year might be taking multiple AP classes. That's what they've decided is a challenge and succeeding in that would be success. Uh, we want you to promote and encourage and be excited about their interests, no matter what they are. We need to get away from some of our biases for that. Uh, I'm a big supporter of athletics. I constantly take a step back with my children and say, listen, if you don't wanna play this sport or you don't wanna get dedicate that much time, or when dad comes into the room and says, hey, anyone wanna throw lacrosse? Maybe that's not the first thing I should throw out there but we want your children to be able to stack experiences. So promote different things. If they show a passion for something, please support them in that, uh, no matter what it is. And it's okay if we don't know, meaning the student, what they wanna major in. I will remind you, they, their brains just aren't ready to make some of those types of decisions. It would be lovely if the student had an academic passion and they knew at least leaning toward what they would want to use that, uh, how they would want to be a positive member of society, what they would want to contribute to and what they might want to major in, that'd be gr that would be great. I think that would make some of us feel very happy. Uh, but forcing that or forcing that expectation upon our students will just force them into making probably bad decisions uh, and perhaps also make them question if they're successful themselves. If we're setting expectations on our students that they're not ready to meet, that will cause stress upon them. And they, you may not know it, and we may not know it, but if we put a bias on them or an expectation that they're not meeting, they're going to do whatever they can to try and meet that expectation. That's why when we ask, if we ask about where they wanna to go to school before the why, they're always going to list the same dozen schools that their classmates have gone to in the past five years, or their brothers and sisters looked at, or the people in their neighborhood look at, or their parents mention all the time. These are the types of schools I should want to go to, rather than I know why I'm going to school, and now I'm going to go out and find schools that meet that why. We continue on in terms of healthy preparation this time. Uh, I think keeping notes, a diary, a journal is a really good idea. It's not going to be something that every child is going to want to do, but especially when they have experiences, asking them to reflect upon those experiences. Maybe it's a football season. Maybe it was their history class. Maybe it's a trip that you're about to be able to take. Maybe it's the pandemic, whatever it might be. Keeping some simple notes, some simple reflections is a really good idea making sure we have proper perspective in this process, which I probably harped on maybe perhaps a little bit too much on the last slide, but things will work out in this process. If your students work hard in the classroom and are successful at Archmere, they are prepared for success in college and everything will work out. Every senior drove past us yesterday in their cars. They were all smiling. They were all celebrating and they were all happy about their futures. A little more nervous this year than in past years because of some of the uncertainty, but they're excited about where they're going to school. We want you to be able to, we want you to encourage you to attend college programming whenever you like, but please don't force your sophomore uh, to come to some of our programs. We'll be ready to talk to them whenever they're ready to do these things. Look for the cues. Look for the things that have an interest, a motivation, a question. They show a little bit of initiative. Uh, and there's, but there's a fine line between encouraging and pushing or requiring. And I found that out a few years ago when in one of our surveys, our students said, every time I show an interest in something and I share it with my parents, they overemphasize, try to find a camp or a coach or a tutor and force 
me to do something that I had identified as enjoyable and I did at my leisure and now it became a chore. That's a fine line and that's knowing your child and only you know them well enough to know perhaps what the difference between encouragement and pushing or requiring is. Uh, but if they show initiative and in things, please uh, nurture that. I think that's a good word for that. Notice how they handle failure and losing. It's important. I think terms like, would you be interested in, you know, there's an opportunity your friend is going, which I found out this year in the college search process. I like to share my own experiences, but my, my daughter had some really nice college visits. She's a rising senior. Uh, and then we encouraged her to bring one of her friends to the next college visit, and it went a lot better than the other ones had. Uh, so sometimes they want their friends with them to have a, even a more shared experience with other people. And it, this is a shared experience, this whole process. Our education is a shared experience with classmates and parents and brothers and sisters and obviously teachers and counselors. Um, just support your child wherever you can. I think that's very important. Again, we're trying to stack as many experiences as we can for them. Uh, so, and I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's a failure if they stop doing something. Eventually we would hope that those efforts go towards something else. So if your child wrestled in their freshman year and they don't wanna do that in their sophomore year, or they've danced up until this year and said, it's really hard to dance with my Archmere schedule, and I, I've, lost, I've, I've fallen out of love with it a little bit. I want to do something different. That's okay. It's not failure. It's just stacking a different experience, which they will pull from for decision making. They will pull from for their creativity, and they will learn from making tough decisions like that. Okay? So again, what does success or what does this really look like? We want each of your children to take a challenging course load. Okay based upon their abilities and their motivations at this time. We want a nice balance of in, inside the classroom and outside the classroom. We want them to have plenty of time for happiness and play, and sometimes that's one that really gets lost at Archmere sometimes. It's a rigorous place. We push your children really hard, and quite frankly, sometimes they push themselves harder than we do. Uh, they have to remember what it's like to have fun, uh, what it's like to interact with people outside the classroom because that's going to be a real important part of their college education. We want them to challenge themselves to raise their hands, to volunteer, to, to pick and choose what they want to get involved in. Leadership, commitment, dedication, initiative are all great things. And there's a Harvard study out there that says after grade point average, following through on a commitment, is the number two predictor of college success. That if a student was dedicated to something for all four years of high school, that they've shown the grit, they've shown the ability, they've shown commitment, they've shown passion, that that would be the number two predictor of college success after academic performance in the classroom. And that doesn't mean that what they're dedicated to right now will be their thing when they get to college. We have a lot of students who play sports at Archmere who either don't have the interest or perhaps even the talent level or commitment level to play college athletics. That's okay. If I'm an application reader, I look at that student and say, they dedicated themselves to four years of field hockey. They worked really hard. They showed passion. They showed commitment that commitment and that passion is just going to transfer to another activity on my com in my community. So maybe the field hockey player joins a fraternity or sorority or gets involved in student government or gets involved in the honor society within their major. There's a lot of different opportunities. We just transition that passion and that commitment. Uh, so all of these things listed in, this, in these bullets are wonderful things to introduce to our children and again, if we go back, if they can reflect on these experiences, it's a great thing to be able to do uh, because ultimately their, their applications are a reflection of who they are. Uh, it's, it's their story. Uh, they got some notes from past years. It might help them uh, through the process a little bit. 
and Mr. Dettinger, a past Archmere parent, uh, entrepreneur. Uh, I remember him making this statement at a, at a career day function for us. Whatever job you have, no matter how much you like it, be the best at it. Um, those students who make the most of any and every situation are gonna find a lot of success in this process. Efficiently, but I think it's important. Uh, most of our parents have some questions about testing. When should we test? What tests are we gonna take? Uh, and when I say we, I mean the student. And how is Archmere going to prepare us? So a little bit of a testing line going through some things really efficiently uh, this year. October of the sophomore year, your children will take a pre-ACT. It's an age-appropriate ACT test. Uh, in the junior year, October, same testing day, they will take the PSATs, which is an age-appropriate SAT exam. It's also the National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test as well. Obviously, at some point, many of you will your children will be taking AP tests. Uh, AP tests in terms of the college process uh, is not a big part of the process. 99% of schools do not ask for AP test scores. Students can self-report them if they'd like to, uh, but they are, they are not as much a part in terms of the actual test scores of the admissions process as families might think, as students might think. It does not mean that they're not an important part uh, if a student's prepared for that rigors of an AP class that they shouldn't take it because they don't think that, that it will impact their college decisions far from that. It will impact their college preparations in taking that class, especially at a school like Archmere where 90% of the students pass their AP exam. There is a certain expectation when I'm reading an application or when my friends are reading our students students' application that, okay, they took an AP class at Archmere, that means they probably passed it. That means it was a course that they probably, they succeeded in, uh, they're a real strong student in that subject area. Uh, subject test is something that we will introduce you to uh, later in the process. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of changes in testing after, after this year. Those of you who have talked to students who are families who are rising, uh, students and families of rising seniors, uh, there's been a lot of canceled tests out there, which has caused a lot of changes in the profession or in higher education and the admissions process. So we'll keep you up to date on everything. We'll email you regularly when we think we, need, we know the masses need to know information. But again, if you have questions about testing or anything else, please reach out to us. We will always offer practice tests during the year. We will offer a Saturday morning practice ACT and a Saturday morning practice SAT for free that will be graded for the students that decide to sit for them. One will be in December every year, one will be in January every year. Rising sophomores, it's still, these are mostly for our juniors. Uh, we do get some sophomores trickle in to take some of this practice. Uh, probably only recommend that if your child is on an advanced math track. Otherwise, I think they will just get frustrated with the tests perhaps even a little intimidated if the majority of the tests they haven't had math-wise yet. Uh, so we would like the students to have gone past uh, Algebra 2 trig uh, before, or be in Algebra 2 trig before they jump into these practice tests. Again, always a discussion we can have, always questions that we will take. We always get questions on test prep. We do not do test prep at Archmere. Your, your curriculum, or again, I, I need to stop doing that. Your child's curriculum will prepare them for these tests. Does that mean that they don't have to prepare for them? Additionally, I do think that they should. I think it's wise. There's free preparation out there. There's preparation that our, that our teachers will do a little bit of in class. Uh, there's also a lot of families that will pay to help their child in terms of tutoring and prep. Uh, we will provide anyone who asks a list of outlets that past Archmere families have used, uh, how they deliver their product, whether it's individual, whether it's online, whether it's in a class setting, whether it's, or it's in person. Um, and that's something that I think, if a family thinks that that's something that the, that the child would benefit from, uh, I think that that process should start probably looking two or three months before the family feels that they would want to start it. And that process should probably start 10 weeks 
four months before the first testing opportunity. And when should that first testing opportunity be? We'll send some guidance out uh, about that at the beginning of the junior year, uh, but we will certainly answer your questions when you have them. What's gonna happen this year? Some of the things that we're gonna do uh, with your children, we're gonna introduce them to Cialfo. We're gonna give them their Cialfo account. Uh, many of you might be familiar with the term Naviance, the name Naviance. Uh, we've transitioned from Naviance or will uh, completely uh, to C Alpha. Uh, we've done that with our rising seniors already, uh, and we will be completely C Alpha based at the end of June. In the sophomore year, we'll have some career discussions and exercises with your children. We'll get into the classroom. Uh, we will obviously have our college counseling programming, which you and your children will be invited to. Uh, we'll occasionally have some summer opportunities. Um, one thing that we will have that we uh, welcome you to do is if you have questions and you want them answered individually rather than, uh, let me wait for the email to the entire class uh, or, let, or, or waiting until back to the, when we're back to the school year, uh, we will have summer optional half hour family meetings. Uh, you will set the agenda for that, you and your child. Uh, we will have communications out about that in early June in terms of when those meetings will be, how to sign up. Uh, I'm sure we'll probably early on, we may have some of those virtual, but we'll still be able to answer all of your questions virtually and or in person. Okay. Please enjoy this time. Uh, Every freshman, every freshman class that comes through, I say cherish this time. We're gonna be congratulating your child on graduation before you know it. Um, and we just won't get the time back. So have, have a lot of fun with your children. Enjoy this, enjoy the Archmere years. Uh, hopefully when we do start working on this college process, the exploration is fun too. And that's the tone that we'd like to set. That's why we don't want to stress freshmen and sophomore students out about college stuff. Uh, we want them to do it uh, under their own motivation, uh, perhaps with a, a slight bit of encouragement, but we think it's important that we don't have a heavy college conversation with them really early on unless they feel that they're ready to do that. Some resources that you may want to check out. Uh, the Truth About College Admissions, the Family Guide is a new one. Uh, it's written from a college counselor uh, in New Hampshire as well as the Director of uh, Admission at Georgia Tech. Uh, it's a real nice piece, a little bit tongue in cheek, uh, but I think also a healthy guide uh, if you're wondering how to, how to have a really good college process, to be quite honest with you. The FISC Guide is a great resource if, if you and your family are starting to look into well, what's this college all about? What's that college all about? I think they do a really nice job of just describing uh, different schools. I'm a big believer in growth mindset uh, and, and Duckworth's work in grit. There's life after college. That's a little bit more of an advanced read uh, for, for how our children really should be attacking the college process. Uh, and any of you have watched the video, uh, Dr. Pausch's last lecture um, or read the book, uh, just a wonderful perspective. I highly recommend it. Uh, I think it puts life into perspective um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a great read. I just highly recommend it. My summer reading recommendation this year as well. So some closing thoughts uh, before we end the video. You're not behind. No matter where you are, no matter where your child is in terms of this process, or no matter where you end up when we start working with your children individually uh, in the middle of their junior year, we are accelerated at Archmere. And that means that we have the luxury of saying, okay, wherever you're at, that's where we're going to start, and we'll be okay. We'll get to where we'll get to the end point, and it'll be fine. Uh, so that's that. That I need to reassure everybody who's watching this, and any of our students, wherever you are at, uh, we will make sure we guide you through this process, and we'll use intrusive counseling if we need to. But really, an Archmere student and family would really have to ignore our everything our office does in order not to be educated on this process and not to know what they should be doing and when, okay? That being said, please ask questions when you have them. If your child has a question, uh, resist perhaps the instinct to take care of it for them and encourage them to come on into our office and ask the question or encourage them over the summer to send us an email. And you're certainly welcome to maybe two weeks later, check in with us and say, 
did my daughter come in and talk to you or did my son shoot you an email like they said they would? Uh, and we will certainly answer that question and uh, maybe we'll be able to reach out to them then and say, I heard you had a question, let's chat. Or maybe we can grab them uh, in St. Norbert Hall and say, hey, Grace, come on over here. I'd like to talk to you for a second and we'll break some barriers down. We'll make them a little more comfortable with us and we'll get, their inf we'll get the information to them that they think that they need. Uh, and again, rising sophomore appointments uh, this summer. We'll have an email out in the near future uh, about some appointment opportunities if you have individual questions. Uh, if you don't meet with us this summer, that's fine. You will be on regular, a regular communication flow. Uh, but as I always tell our students, the regular communication, the regular communication flow meets the needs of about 90% of the people who are on that email about that topic. But there will be probably about 10% that might say, that just doesn't quite work for me. And that's when we really encourage you to ask your individual questions. Uh, again, uh, myself, Ms. Souza, Mrs. Lyon, and Mr. Duffy really look forward to working with you in this process. Uh, it's a fun process, it has its challenges, it can be a roller coaster at times, it can even be frustrated, uh, frustrating, uh, but we are uh, excited to work with you and uh, we do we do like what we like what we do um, and it's it's an adventure every year so we encourage you to ask questions uh, when you have them thank you very much if you watch this video uh, for hanging in there with us uh, we look forward to seeing you back on campus uh, at some point in the very near future take care god bless and be well